What's going on, YouTube? It's Black Shaw back at it with a brand new video for you guys today. Happy Wednesday. It's hump day. What's going on? What's going on? So I was requested to check out this video. It's called Top 10 Stephen King Adaptions That Deserve a Remix. So, okay, this is like a couple of years old or whatever. This came out in 2017. However, um, as we as we know now, they redid uh, it. You know, chapter chapter one came out in 2017. Chapter two is coming out this year. It's exciting. I'm excited. It's gonna be creepy though. They're gonna have that big ass spider scene. Close my eyes right away. Um, they redid Pet Cemetery this year as well. I still haven't seen it yet. I'm working on it. It's just so many damn movies that keep coming back on and off. You know what I'm saying? It's within weeks after weeks, like, give me a minute, okay? I had to wait a whole damn week to see uh, Endgame. A week after. Like, that was a bunch of... You know what? It don't even matter. Anyway, let's check out this video in about a three, two, one. There are good stories in these movies. They just need a fresh coat of paint. Welcome right. to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Stephen King adaptations that Gross. deserve a remake. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at those Stephen King stories that have previously been adapted to film or TV, but which could be better if given the IT treatment. Original King screenplays made specifically for the screen will not be included. He can talk in my dreams, Stephen. Isn't that the limit? Number 10, Cujo. Cujo. Cujo is easily one of Stephen King's darkest and most popular Hell stories, but audiences are torn about good, the quality though. of its 1983 adaptation. Some think it's a frightening, if what did you expect in the 80s? Fest, while others think it's just kind of meh. Yes, the movie performed relatively well at the box office. However, I thought it was most good. agree that the high point is D. Wallace's performance, with the rest of the runtime proving uneven and, in spots, kind of boring. This type of story doesn't even need a big budget, since most of it takes place in a single location. Just get some great actors and a convincing dog and you're good oh, to go. Oh, y'all shady as hell. out loud, keep King's ending. Yeah, that was... Crazy. Number nine, the dark half. Shut up, or I have to cut you, sis. She already looked cut. What do you want? What I just say? <laughs> this suspenseful and mysterious novel isn't one of King's most popular works. But what in the hell is adaptation. that? Like a number of King stories, it follows an author. Only this one this has dude's an evil to get away alter murder, ego him and becomes embroiled in a series of murders. Okay, we're Ew. with you so far. It also stars Timothy Hutton and Michael Rucker, and was directed by George A. Romero. How could it go wrong? Oh, well, the they're movie so cute. wasn't terrible, but it also wasn't all that memorable. Boys. Aside from Hutton's dual performance as Beaumont and Stark, that is. However, a fresh take that actually plays up the story's supernatural elements could surely turn it into a riveting entry in the horror genre. Are you ready? Why are you holding him like that? Just waiting on you. Number eight. Secret, Secret Window. Window. It was published for the first time in June 1995 Johnny in magazine. Nice try, Mr. Shooter. Secret Window was adapted from a novella in the Four Past Midnight collection. The story follows Mort Rainey, an author who's accused of plagiarism by a dangerous man. The concept Ooh. is intriguing, and John Turturro's performance as John Shooter is captivating. But the rest of the movie gets bogged down in uninteresting domestic tiffs and struggles. Not to mention, the filmmakers chose to go in a completely different direction with their ending than Stephen King did. Our tips? Cut the storyline down and streamline the narrative, so it's about more its supposed plagiarism, guilt, and growing madness. That would make for a much more engaging watch. Yeah, that's... that's a good idea. Number 7, The, the Running, Running Man. Man. What's the number one television show? This movie follows the wrongly convicted Ooh. Ben Richards as he attempts to survive a television show Man, called terminated. The Running Man, which sees criminals hunted down for viewers' Bye -bye. amusement. While it is great fun, it's also almost nothing like the original novel. The book describes a bleak dystopia in which the cost of living is high and reality shows rule the airwaves, with Ben volunteering for The Running Man game show, which also has a different setup so he can earn enough money to pay his kids' medical bills. The movie is filled with campy costumes and Arnold Schwarzenegger's specific brand of zingers. Okay, we've had the cheesy action. We're ready for a more faithful, horrific adaptation. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine! Number six, Salem's okay. Lot. You're not leaving Salem's Lot, are you? 
I'm not leaving. Don't. Let's get this out of the way. Salem's Lot is an awesome miniseries. The show aired on CBS in 1979, and for its time, it was terrific and terrifying entertainment. It was faithful to King's novel, and the scares were plenty. No. Like, who can forget that window scene? A remake was attempted in 2004, oh, no. but it was a less faithful Get away. adaptation, taking great liberties with the characters and their fates. So it could oh, be hell, that's where that ugly magic. ass vampire Ultimately, came from. As good as the original may be, yeah, you love to see it remade with modern effects and scares. You shouldn't mess with the Don't classics, let it drag you in there. This is one line of vampires that deserves to be brought back to life. Get out of there, Grandpa. Yeah. Number five, Dreamcatcher. Yeah. Oh, that's disgusting. King wrote Dreamcatcher high on OxyContin while he was recovering from his car accident. So maybe that explains a few things. After all, it's a story about four friends who share a psychic connection after befriending a man with Down syndrome and features a man pooping out an alien. All things considered, a remake would probably still be a little out there, but it would almost definitely be better than the 2003 movie. Then I killed the damn dog. a solid cast that includes Thomas Jane, Damian Lewis, Timothy Oliphant, Jason Lee, Donnie Wahlberg, and Morgan Freeman oh, just shit, couldn't that's get it together. With a new director and a tighter script, maybe a new movie could have. Are we shape shifting now? Number four, Pet Cemetery. Which they did this year. Oh, you can. There's been some buzz already about a Pet Cemetery do-over, and we desperately hope it comes to fruition. Don't get us wrong, Pet Cemetery is a decent movie. Those Zelda scenes alone are enough to give us nightmares for days. I couldn't stand her ass. Get you. This is King's darkest and most disturbing. Oh. The one that even he realizes is way too messed up. The movie just needs more oomph, more pizzazz. Oh, Given please, the right that movie crew, creeped me the Pet fuck out. Cemetery could be an extremely unsettling movie. As it stands, Damn, he looked like kind of flat Mary Shelley. Oh, I hated that part. Thinking, with the potential for I hated so that part. more creepiness. <laughs> Number three, The Langoliers. Is the plane in trouble, mister? Where is everybody? I don't know what's going on. Another novella in the Four Past Midnight collection. The Langoliers is probably one of King's most inventive and underappreciated works. In it, various strangers discover that they've traveled back in time and must return to the present before the titular Langoliers eat away the devoid past and them along with it. It really is a fascinating idea, but as is to be expected, the execution of the 1995 miniseries was... Well, just look at the Langoliers. This story desperately needs a remake. Oh, hell. Only so the filmmakers would have why. enough of a budget to create the terrifying world eaters in a program more advanced than Microsoft Paint. Oh, jeez. Please make them go away! Let me get, let me get Number two, The Stand. Sounds like you're having a busy day. The Stand was first published in 1978, and many King aficionados consider it his finest work. It's a sprawling, complex epic about a band of pandemic survivors who take sides in a coming biblical war. It was adapted as a miniseries that aired on ABC. And while it is pretty good, this King masterpiece truly needs the right budget to properly work. The miniseries suffers mostly from the comparatively limited television budgets of the 90s. Okay, that's disgusting. And it fails to capture the novel's horrifying sense of scale and the overall destruction of the plague. Given the right finances and runtime, the Stand could be the Who's finest the King adaptation of all time. And this side's not any better. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. But no matter what it's called, the Tommy there's knockers. magic there. The engines believed it. That's an interesting so name. Why? Make sacrifice unto him. Bring him the blood of the Outlander. Man, it's crazy. Musty. I don't think he Under can hear you. Under the dome. God. Baby, you okay? I, I can't hear you. Number one, the, the dark, dark tower. tower. You know when you can't differentiate between dreams and reality. It's not a dream. Okay, I'm not crazy. I always see the same thing, the tower. Written over the course of 30 years, the Dark Tower series is Stephen King's magnum opus. 
It follows Roland DeShane and his friends as they travel towards the mythical and enigmatic Dark Tower and attempt to best the man in black once and for all. You'd be hard-pressed to find a constant reader who didn't devour all eight books of this series. But the movie? Well, to put it politely, it didn't do the source material justice. He's called a gunslinger. To put it less politely, it was a disappointing mess. That's why someone should just completely reboot this series and do it properly. Because well, the yeah, gunslinger well, and his quartet deserve far better than this. You have nothing here. Besides, I could use your help. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gunslinger. Do you agree with her? Okay, so most of these, other than Cujo, it, uh, Pet Cemetery, and that's pretty much about it. Um, I mean, I don't, I've never really heard of these. Like I said, it's a lot of Stephen King movies I never saw, might have heard of them, never saw, never saw, never heard of them, both of them. You know, I don't know. But uh, let me get on Cool Joe real quick. So everybody talking about, oh, um, it didn't look as good. I mean, what do you, what did you really expect from horror movies like in the 80s and stuff? I mean, come on. Like, you act like, people act like they had advanced, like, uh, cinematography, all the type of graphic stuff that it takes to make shit look scary in horror movies today and it's like, it's not the same thing, like we didn't have all this crazy enhanced and advanced technology to make crazy effects and stuff like it is today where the blood can look super crazy and like super gory and you know, like death scenes could look like the shit is real, you know, it, it wasn't like that back in the day, however for those who are complaining about the movie Cujo, y'all can y'all can go on some movie because that movie creeped me the fucker out. Okay, that damn do and I love dogs. Okay, so I think Saint Bernard's is cute, but Cujo, seeing him all bloodied up and full of egg yolk, and did y'all see that? Did y'all did y'all see that shit on the side? He had that like egg yolk or some kind of mucus or some kind of pus or some shit on the side of his face. I'm like, can somebody clean this damn dog already? I mean, I know he vicious and. Well, never mind, because that ain't going to work either, because they going to chop your ass up them damn pieces. He killed the, uh, he killed the drunk-ass hoarding man. He killed the, uh, the farmer or whatever, the repair man. You know, while the wife and the child, they went on vacation. You know, and, uh, what's her name? The actress, I forgot her real name. Um, I thought she did a pretty good job. I mean, what else was she supposed to do? She's, you, like, you can only imagine you're getting attacked by a dog or, almost getting attacked. I mean, she tried to get out. That was stupid of her to do that, though. You know, what I forgot what she did exactly exactly in that part. But, I mean, that was pretty stupid because it's like, even though she didn't see him, that's the, that's the worst part because you don't know where the hell he at. And as soon as she got her ass out, he was just laying there under the damn car waiting for her ass. Like, oh, okay, she want to get out. Oh, I'm going to whoop your ass. And that's what the fuck he did. Chewing on her leg. Then her little baby, what was his name? Ted or Ten? Not Ten. It was Ted, I think. Anyway, the little boy, he was crying. You know, just imagine being in that position. You seeing your mama getting her ass told the fuck up with her leg in this case. Like, nobody wants to see that. And then he had a breathing problem. He was getting all hot and shit. He almost motherfucking died. She had to bust the damn window and whatnot to get him out of there and get up in the house. And then he bust through the window and she was like, this, this, this motherfucker ain't dead yet. She had to literally shoot this damn dog and then come here, here come the husband while he was on a damn trip. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that movie was creepy enough for me, okay? Like, it came out in, what, the 80s? You know, I mean, hell, look at Freddy Krueger, you know what I mean? Like, that's, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, I don't think that was from Stephen King. I don't know. Um, however, well, no, that was from Wes Craven. What's wrong with me? Um, Freddy Krueger, I think they could do a remake, but you see, if he's not doing it, I don't want to watch it because, like I said before, can't nobody play Freddy Krueger like Robert England. And with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up, okay? Comment below what's a uh, remake by Stephen King or any other um, great film directors and whatnot uh, that you would like to see from the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, Friday the 13th. Um, I would say Child's Play, but I mean, they already doing that. Chuck is a robot android clone motherfucker now, so... Um, Anyone, any of them out there, let me know in the comments below. And also, if there's anything I can react to for you guys next, let me know that in the comments as well. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, follow me on my Instagram, and hit that notification bell so you guys can know that video up and loaded. It's Black Shaw. Stay tuned.